All right. Hey there, and welcome to LChat. This is just a weekly informal time together. It's a live stream where I talk about um, helpful topics, business, blogging, social media design each week for creative entrepreneurs. And um, I'm so thankful to have you all tuning in this week. I know it takes a few minutes um, for everyone to file in and for us to get started. So um, I'm going to start by pointing you over to our, um, our LChat Slack forum. So I'm going to share my screen with you really quickly and show you how to access it. This is just a point of contact for us, um, not only tonight, but ongoing throughout the week. And so I'm going to start there while everyone's still filing in. Um, there's a new chat feature tonight, too. So um, if you want to just sign in there and let me know that you can hear me and see me okay, that would be awesome, too. Um, so I know there's a little bit of a lag, but if you can see me and hear me okay in that chat feature, I would really appreciate it if you just said hello and let me know that everything is um, looking okay on that end. I'm going to share my screen really quick with you and show you that um, L chat forum. All right, so you should be able to see my screen. And here is our forum for our L chat group. And this is for tonight for our Q&A time, but also for um, the rest of the week. So if you have any questions or any updates about organizing content on your site, feel free to leave it in the Slack group. If you're not a part of our Slack group yet or our L chat forum, you can go to app dot com to receive an invitation. So if you haven't done that already, just take a quick second um, to pull up lchat, E-L-L-E-C-H-A-T dot Heroku app, I think is how you say it, H-E-R-O-K-U-A-P-P dot com. I'm going to leave that link in the chat window as well. You just simply put in your email address. It'll send you an invitation to our forum and you can start um, leaving comments in here, any questions that you might have throughout tonight's chat, um, and any questions afterward. We had a really great group and a really great conversation going on after the last chat, so I would love to see that again. All right, so let me go ahead. Great, you can hear me, you can see that I'm here. Awesome. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to take it back to me for a second. Great. I'm so glad that you all can hear me. Here's that link that I told you about as well. All right. So tonight we're going to be talking about organizing site. Um, and I'm really, this is an area that I really love. It kind of combines both um, design and organization, um, which are both passions of mine. I love being able to simplify sites for my clients. And I'm excited to walk you through how you can simplify your site and make it easier and easier to navigate for visitors to your site. So um, with that said, I'm going to turn this around one more time so we can get started. Keep changing my screen on you all. Thanks for bearing with me. All right. Too many windows up. Let's see here. One more second. All right, I'm going to keep that chat window up as well so I can follow along with you all as I go too. All right, so organizing content on your website. Um, so I'm going to start, it might seem a little weird, but you'll see where I'm going. So tennis, we're going to start there. Tennis is one of those sports that seems, a, that seems pretty simple when you watch it on TV. Um, I remember when Nintendo came out with Wii a few years ago, tennis was one of my favorite games to play on the Wii. You simply hit the ball back and forth and it seems really simple. And then in college, my tennis savvy roommate invited me up to the courts near our dorm and let me use her extra racket and challenged me to a game. And I remember thinking, really, how hard can it be to hit the ball back and forth? But oh my goodness, I was terrible because something so seemingly simple in theory was oh so difficult in practice. And so that's what this L chat is for. Um, maybe you can relate to the seemingly so simple conundrum when it comes to your website. Because we're online so often, we have just grown accustomed to how a website should be able to function. But if you've ever built a website on your own, you know how well that you may have been, it may have been simple in theory, but it's very difficult in practice. Um, so tonight, 
We may not touch on the design aspects of your website, but I'm going to walk you through how to organize the content on your website to provide a better user experience for your audience. And just before I start to dig in, um, I want to remind you too, I think in your window, if things aren't coming up clearly for you on your end, I think there's a high resolution option or something along those lines. I know your window looks a little bit different than mine. So um, if you aren't seeing things clearly, feel free to check out that option below. All right, so with that said, um, tonight's L chat won't be as helpful if we don't take a look at why user experience is such a big deal in the first place. And you wouldn't be here if you didn't already understand that to some extent already. So we're gonna quickly look at three reasons user experience should be considered in the design of your website. Number one, it helps users quickly and effectively find what they're looking for on your website. So using your site shouldn't feel like second nature to visitors. There shouldn't be a learning curve when they come to your site. And I don't know about you, but I've been on websites in the past that are filled with special features and they seem to be very interactive. They have hidden gems, but the busyness of it all often makes it difficult for me to find what I'm looking for. And many times I give up searching for that information because I'm frustrated with trying to find it and I just leave the website. And that's not the kind of experience that you want to provide for visitors, especially if you're trying to get them to eventually book your services or buy your products down the line and build that trust. So creating an experience for your visitors is super important. But if the experience hinders visitors from getting to where they want to go on your website, you might have a problem. So by focusing on user experience, you decrease the chances of someone leaving your site frustrated um, and you increase the likelihood that visitors will be able to find what they're looking for. So number two, it also encourages visitors to return and suggest your site to others. So sites that are frustrating, complicated, difficult to use, if you find a site like that, you often won't encourage other people to go and use it for themselves and they're probably not going to spread the word about your business. However, if they have a really positive experience and they're finding content easily on your site and they're enjoying their time on your site, there's a pretty good chance that they're gonna not only visit it again, but suggest it to others. So the more user-friendly your site is, the easier it is um, for people to find your content, the more likely they'll return and tell others about it too. And lastly, um, it has the potential to increase inquiries and sales, which is the biggie and the end goal. Um, your site should be easy to navigate and it should create a positive experience so that users can turn into paying customers and clients. So by easily accessing information and in pages that they're seeking, your visitors are more likely to buy from you and book your services. So my goal over these next 40-ish minutes is to help you organize the content on your website in a way that's intuitive, user-friendly, um, one that people will enjoy visiting, one that people can easily find what they're looking for and return to time and time again, and hopefully buy from you down the road. So we're going to start with some simple questions to help you build a basis and a structure for your website. And then we'll walk you through some solutions and best practices for grouping and placing content on your website. So whether you have a website that's up and running right now or you're about to dive into creating your website for the first time, I hope you'll walk away from this time together tonight with some practical steps and a little more confidence for creating a streamlined, user-friendly online presence. So first, I need you to answer two questions. So feel free to take notes as I go along, but I'll also be posting my slides in the LChat forum too at the end of this live stream. Um, and I'll also have a recording that's posted on the Ellen Company website as well. So first question, what is the purpose of your website? Um, and this is the biggie. This is the overarching foundation of your site. Why are you creating this site? Are you creating it to provide helpful information on your blog in order to build trust with your audience and establish authority in your industry? Are you doing it to showcase workshop dates and encourage visitors to register? Or are you doing it to highlight your experience through beautiful galleries and book clients? Um, there might be several reasons that you have your website. But um, regardless, 
This question and your answers to this question will have large implications on the pages that need to be included in your site. So it's going to also have an effect on your on how your site is going to be laid out, which items need to be emphasized and highlighted. And for many of us, especially those that are just starting out, we tend to look to others in our industry to see what they've included on their sites. We look at their navigation, we look at the content that they have on the pages of their site, and we get ideas from it and tend to follow suit. Um, but tonight, instead, I would highly encourage you to go through and list your objectives on paper. And then beside each one, list the pages and content on your site that will help you meet those objectives. This is a great starting point in gaining an understanding of which pages need to be on your site. So, um, for example, these are just a couple examples of some Ellen Company goals for our website. First is to build trust with my audience through blog posts. So I need to make sure that, number one, I have a blog, but also that I have archive pages to make old blog posts really easy to access. Um, I also want to showcase my design work, and so I have a portfolio page. I want to provide information about my design services, which is where my services page comes in. I want to familiarize new visitors and people who are unfamiliar with Ellen Company, and that's usually through the About page. Um, I want to answer common questions they, that I might get a lot um, through email or other avenues, so that's where my FAQ page comes in. And also, blog posts are helpful um, for that, too. If I want prospective clients and readers to get in touch with me, that's where my contact page comes in. If I want to give visitors more information about my products and my e-courses, that's where my individual product pages come in. So you can see how all of these goals, and I have many purposes for my website, but as I list each one of those, it helps me think through, okay, what page am I going to need on my website that goes along with that? And you, one page might be coming up over and over again, and that's okay, but it, it helps you start to think about the content that you need for your site, how you need to word things, what images you might use. So I'd highly encourage you to just on a scratch piece of paper, start writing out why your website is important, what you need to use it for. I think we get so um, accustomed to knowing that we need a website and knowing that we need an online presence, but we um, aren't super intentional about exactly how we're using our website to benefit our business. And by listing out each one of these purposes and functions, it might help you gain an idea of the pages you need to include, what you need to showcase. Um, so I really encourage you to start here with what is the purpose of your website. And then my the second question that I have for you, um, what action do you want visitors to take when they do land on your site? And for most of you, the end action you want a visitor to take is to book a service or buy a product eventually. It may not be the first time that they land on your site, but eventually that's the action that you, you would want visitors to take, especially if um, you have an online business because your website is kind of that home base, that center stage for your business. It's where the action happens. So if you're an online business, that's usually where your money is made. Not so much on social media, but on your website. So instead of thinking about the pages on your website as separate groups of content, start to think of ways that you can create a flow and use all of those pages to guide visitors around your site. You don't want any dead ends. You want traffic to steadily move through your site so that they'll reach that end goal or that you have them reach that end goal of your product pages or your contact page to book your services. So by using intention and strategy, when you're setting up your website, you become sort of a tour guide, um, leading people around to the information you want visitors to see and take note of. And one of the easiest and most effective ways to keep people moving through your site is to create a call to action on every page. And I have the definition um, listed here because it's one of those words that's used often but helpful to define. Um, a call to action is an instruction to the audience to provoke an immediate response, usually using an imperative verb such as a call now or find out more or visit a store today. You don't want any pages on your website to land in a dead end, to cause somebody to say, okay, I don't know where to go now and, so I, and I don't feel like figuring it out, so I'm just going to leave. You want 
that flow that I talked about a moment ago. So for many pages, your, your call to action will be a no brainer. So for product pages, it's usually buy now. Or for contact pages, it's usually a big submit button below your contact form. But for other pages, you might have to get a little creative. And about pages are common places for dead ends. So instead of just creating an about page with a simple bio, um, which is good, and that's why people are coming to it, just consider creating a call to action at the bottom of your about page with a link to your services or a link to your portfolio or your contact page, your social media buttons. You can use a simple headline for each one, like follow along with me or get in touch or let's work together. And you can see here, this is for one of my clients, Real Food Whole Life. Um, she has, at the end, she has a little subscribe here to join me call to action. Um, and then information on how to contact her and how to follow along with her. And then also some current reader favorites um, that she wanted to highlight to point people again back to her blog. So her about page doesn't just end um, and leave people thinking, okay, where do I need to go next? Or maybe I'll just hop off the site, but they see something that might attract them, whether they want to subscribe there after they've just learned about Robin and learned about her blog. Um, they might want to follow along with her or they might want to click on a blog post, but it's important to have those options there for them so that they can make that choice. But you're kind of making it for them by having that information down there at the bottom. So think about what people might be interested in reading more about or seeing after they've just read your about page. If they've made it all the way down to the bottom of your about page, then they probably enjoyed getting to know you and they would want to follow along with you or read more of your posts. Another way that you can utilize calls to action is on your portfolio plate page, excuse me. Um, portfolios are a great place to include a link to your contact page and your services page. So if someone's interested in seeing your work, they're more than likely interested in working with you. So you can make it really easy on them by including a link to your services page with your offerings or your contact page where they can reach out to you. So when you have your portfolio and you're organizing um, all of your work onto this page, don't forget down at the bottom to have a little blip like this photographer that I worked with where we just put simply schedule your session and put a link to her contact page, making it really easy to flow right into contacting her. And then also, I told you before that contact pages are fairly straightforward and the call to action is usually that submit button at the bottom of the form. But one unexpected call to action on your contact page that can also cut back on common questions and emails is to include a link to your FAQ page. Um, so I found that really helpful linking to my FAQ page to cut back on the number of emails I receive about the same questions over and over again. Um, another one that might be good, even after people get in contact to you, you might get in contact with you rather, you might have a spot underneath that links to some popular blog posts or something like that, just to keep that flow to your website and keep people moving through it. Um, you can even take the call to action approach with your blog posts by including related posts at the end of each article to keep visitors scrolling through your blog. So just like your about page, if someone makes it all the way through to the end of your blog post, they're probably interested in reading more on a related topic. So you can even group content together on within your blog posts and create calls to action there. So by including calls to action on each page, you're eliminating those dead ends, which are more likely to stop a visitor's movement through your site. But by telling them where to go next and pointing them in one direction, you have a greater opportunity to guide visitors around your site and hopefully toward purchasing your products and booking your services. So once you've listed the pages of your website and the information that needs to be included in each one, go back and include one call to action for each page and be strategic and create a path from one page to the next. Um, 
You might even go as far as sketching out a flow chart or a map for your website to lay it all out just to think, okay, if they're going from the about page, where do I want to point them next? If they're going from my services page, where do I want to point them next? And just laying it all out and creating a chart. So spend some time in this stage outlining the information you'll need to include before moving on to my next point, which is organization. So I'm going to walk you through um, some simple ways to organize the content on your site and make it more intuitive for your audience. And the first is with your navigation and simplifying your na navigation. Have you ever been to the grocery store in search of one item and been so overwhelmed by all the different brands and choices available to you? That's not the experience you want to provide for visitors when they land on your site. Have you ever been to a website where they have over 10 items in their, the top navigation? It's overwhelming, it's too many choices, and people don't know where to go first. So we all look to that top navigation on a website to direct us around a site. And there's nothing more overwhelming than landing on that website and having 10 too many items in the top navigation. It's decision overload. So you want to make decisions easy and logical when people land on your site. So cut back that confusion and overwhelm and better organize the content for your audience by showcasing five to six items in your main navigation. Um, keep in mind that within those five to six items, you might have a drop down in your main navigation um, with maybe two to four pages stacked underneath. Four might be too many, but two to three. Um, but keep the options simple and really straightforward. And if you're having trouble consolidating those pages, utilize your footer um, for things like terms and conditions, frequently asked questions, or you can also set up unlinked pages and link to other pages that you want to call attention to um, on the other pages of your website. So here, this is the behind the scenes. Um, of my Squarespace site for Ellen Company. And you can see we have the home page, the about page. Um, underneath this about folder, it's a drop down. So we have one that's about Ellen Company and then a contact page just to consolidate those. E-courses, which is a landing page, library, blog, and within the collaborative, we have a drop down with posts, archives, and submit a post. So. With these five to six items, it's a lot more intuitive. Um, it's a lot simpler and it makes it a lot easier and less overwhelming for people when they land on your site. But not only that in simplifying the number of items in your navigation, but also reordering your navigation. So the order of the items in your navigation is just as important as what you include. And I think a lot of times we look to what other people are doing, or we may not even think twice about the order of items in our navigation, but it shouldn't be decided upon randomly or haphazardly. Instead, the order of your navigation um, should go from left to right. The order that it goes in left to right should follow the logical order of steps that you want someone to take on your website. And our eyes naturally move from left to right or top to bottom. And so that makes sense. Um, it's intuitive. It's second nature. And that's why the order of most website navigation menus for creative businesses start with home, about, portfolio, services, contact, um, first time visitors usually want to learn more about you and they get a quick glance of that on the home page and then go to the about page then they might want to see your work and view your services and then contact you um, and usually in that order so you see for citrus and sugar studio another one of my clients the first is learn they're a gym so learn learn more about them and what they do experience that's a little bit more about what it looks like to have a membership to their gym then they want people to join and then after they join to receive things like printables and um, helpful articles and that sort of thing. And then shop, buy their gear, tell other people about it, and then maybe connect to contact them. Usually contact is further down in the order. Um, and blog is normally further down in the order too. Although if your blog is the main highlight of your website, your blog might come first in your navigation. Um, so whatever you decide, 
with the navigation um, and the order of the navigation, think through the steps that you want people to take when they land on your site. Um, if you have products that you're selling um, and you have e-courses and then you have other products, you usually want that the more expensive product to be listed first or the product you want to call the most attention to. Um, so that's another thing to keep in mind as well. And remember that I have a little Q&A session at the end of this too. So if you're coming up with questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section um, or the chat feature or also on the Slack forum as well. That's one of my favorite parts of these L chats each week. Um, next for organization is to implement a home page. So your home page is kind of the entryway to your website and it gives you a great opportunity to highlight the most important information that you want visitors to see and then direct them around your site. So until a couple of months ago, actually, I guess it was this past summer, um, Ellen Company didn't have a home page and instead visitors who typed in ellencompanydesign.com were automatically routed to the blog, but not having a home page resulted in confusion for a lot of people who were visiting the site for the first time. And the blog didn't do a great job of explaining what Ellen Company did right off the bat. Um, it wasn't efficient for guiding visitors around the site and giving them a good idea of what Ellen Company does. But since we implemented our homepage, we've had more newsletter signups, we've had more library subscriptions, we've had more e-course inquiries and design inquiries, uh, because users are now landing on that homepage and they're being guided around to important pages on the site that were poorly highlighted before when we were just pointing people to the blog. Um, so don't underestimate the importance of a homepage. It's that starting point. Um, it has it highlights those important items and it can give people a clear idea of your business's mission and purpose right off the bat. Um, and if you don't have a homepage already or if you haven't put too much thought into it, consider implementing one and think about the information that would be most beneficial to highlight there. Again, going back to that first question, what is the purpose of your website? Um, if the purpose is sales for the products that you are selling, um, you, you definitely need to have some semblance of your products on that home page, whether it is um, photos, definitely should be photos, but also buttons to your shop. If it's to highlight your services and get people to book your services, you need to have um, your portfolio on that main page or a link to your portfolio, but really think through what is the big picture here? What's the most important thing? And then point people in that direction. You might include photos to grab people's attention. You might place your mission statement there to give people a clear idea of what you do if it isn't straightforward. Um, you might have an opt-in form for your newsletter if you really want people to sign up for your newsletter. You can have that at the bottom. Um, social media buttons to get people to start following along with you. But really be intentional about what you're showcasing there. It's the first thing they'll see. What's the first thing they need to know about your business? And then creating landing pages. So drop downs are great when used sparingly. I definitely wouldn't suggest using too many um, drop downs or a drop down for every item in your navigation. But oftentimes landing pages are a better option for things like products and categories. Um, and when I'm saying landing pages here, I'm referring to one page on your site that showcases and introduces you to groups of information. So um, there are lots of different kinds of landing pages, but when I'm talking about it here, I'm talking about that one page where you can showcase um, information and, and usually groups of information. So for example, if you have several different e-courses, you might have a landing page for your e-courses that shows them all at a glance and showcases them. And then by clicking on a graphic or a button associated with each e-course, people can see more specific information on each one. So if you have um, a bunch of products that would make sense for your shop, they land on your shop page. But on your shop page, if you have a ton of products, you might want to have a landing page for your shop that has all the different categories of your products to make it easier um, to break down. So grouping that information on a landing page. And then when people click on one group of information, they're able to learn more. 
Um, for blog categories, this is also an option. Instead of using the normal method of categories where you might click on a category in the sidebar and then the, um, then the blog page refreshes and it just sorts blog posts. It looks like your normal blog, but you're just seeing one blog post after the other of the same category. That can be a little hard to root through, especially if you're looking for one post in particular. But if you have a landing page with an archive for that category and you're able to see tons of posts at a glance, it's much easier for people to find what they're looking for and, and get to the information that they need. Um, it's a, you're able to see more at a glance. But landing pages are also really great for features like your newsletter. Um, I remember for us, our newsletter opt-in at first was in our blog sidebar. And um, you could see it if, if you were trying to look for it. But um, I found myself having trouble linking to it on social media. So if I was going to say, a newsletter is going out today, sign up for our mailing list. I'd have to point people to the blog and then point them over to the blog sidebar and it was just confusing. So I created a landing page for our newsletter. And it not only allowed me to link to the opt-in form, but it also allowed me to share more information about what subscribers could expect to receive from Ellen Company in their inbox. Um, it was, gave me an opportunity to share a space for testimonials about our newsletter. Um, it, it's just been great all around. So um, even though I don't link to the newsletter in the main navigation, that top navigation of my site, I do link to it on our homepage and it's gotten a lot more traffic that way. So consider ways that you might use landing pages um, for your website. You may or may not include them in your main navigation, but they could be a great way to highlight important information and guide visitors around your site as well. Um, if you have a lot of information, instead of putting it all on one page, um, put use a landing page and then link to separate pages just to break down that content a little bit more and make it easier for people to digest. So another great way to organize content on your site is to create those landing pages, but also to utilize a blog sidebar. Um, this is a fantastic space for calling attention to items that might not be available in your top navigation or even on the on your home page. So you might include a roundup of popular posts on your blog. You might include a button for your products or services, an opt-in for your newsletter, blog category buttons, a link to your archives. Whatever you want to call attention to, your blog sidebar provides you with a lot of space to do just that. However, a word of caution, I'd recommend being strategic and selective about what you do place here. Um, it's great real estate, as I said before, but it can also be easy to overwhelm your audience if you go to an extreme and try to cram everything into your blog sidebar. Um, so think about the most important things that you want people to see and where you want to guide them. Go back to that first question that we talked about earlier. And another good rule of thumb is to make sure that your blog sidebar doesn't extend further than the length of one of your posts. Um, so that you aren't scrolling forever and ever just looking at the blog sidebar. You want it there as people are scrolling through your post. You want it to catch their attention. So also, like we discussed with your top navigation, you should also consider the order of the items in your sidebar because you know that people are more likely and most often going to, um, going to see the first items in your sidebar. So keep that in mind as well. So um, just a couple more tips, and then I'm going to open it up for a Q&A. And I see over here that we might be having a little bit of trouble with the chat feature. Um, so if we are, go ahead and start leaving questions in the LChat forum. Um, this is what it looks like here. You can use the general um, feed here or organizing content. I opened up a new, um, a new forum there, a new channel. So either one, if you want to start going ahead and leaving questions there, um, I'd be happy to jump into those in just a moment. If you aren't a part of our Slack forum yet and um, you joined in a little bit late, if you go to lchat.herokuapp.com, it's E-L-L-E-C-H-A-T dot Herokuapp, H-E-R-O, 
kuapp.com, and I'll go ahead and put that in um, the chat. If you enter in your email address, you'll get an invitation to the forum, um, and you can use it. There we go. You can use it not only tonight, but continue to ask questions in it throughout the week. I love chiming in, and it was great to see other people chime in last week as well and the week before. All right, so just a few other website tips. Um, one is to utilize search bars. So these are often overlooked, but they're incredibly helpful, especially if you go to a website and you're trying to find a blog post that you read once or um, certain information that you know was there, but you don't even know where to look. Um, search bars are really helpful. And a lot of people um, don't put them in their blog sidebar, but I think and I know that's where people look most often. So be sure that your search bar is high up on your blog sidebar. Make it easy for people to find, not only on your blog sidebar, but maybe also on your archive pages so that they don't have to scroll through tons of content. Or you can place search bars on your home page to make it really easy for people to find what they're looking for. Um, also, archive and group content. It makes it easier for people to find what they're looking for. So make sure that you have blog archives so that people can find old posts. Um, group content together, so group popular posts. Utilize categories on your blog. Um, make it intuitive. Think about what you look for on blogs and what is really helpful to you when you land on websites when you're trying to find something. Also be cautious of text-heavy pages. For websites, visitors don't want to have to read a lot unless they go over to your blog. Unless they're on your blog reading posts, they don't want to have to read a bunch of text. I know when I land on an about page, unless I really, really, really want to learn more about that person, I usually scan it really quick. Or if I see a ton of text, then I might even just um, pass over it. So break things up with images if you do have a lot of text. Consider infographics if it's something like your services page or something like that, um, just to make it more fun for people to look at. Think about, again, consider what you like seeing on, on websites, and it's normally not reading um, a, lot of, a lot of text. It's usually looking at photos and um, interacting with the pages. Or if you do have a ton of information, like on your About page, consider multiple pages. So you might have one that is um, on your business, an About page on your business, and then maybe one on yourself. Or you might have an FAQ page and put some of that content on there. But if you have a ton of text on one page, consider instead placing buttons to different groups of content and break it down a little bit more. Um, and then lastly, get creative. This might not, well, it does have to do with organizing content on your site, um, but always consider ways that you can take the content that you have and use it to set your website apart. We are all so used to having the same layouts for websites, um, and usually there's good reason because the layout helps people navigate through your site, um, but always be thinking about ways that you can break the mold and make your site more memorable. Um, so... Those are just another, a few more website tips. A lot of the information I shared tonight was in the Design Your Brand course that I do. In the last week, we talk about branding your website, and I'm about to make that course evergreen too. So if you did enjoy this content, um, you might consider that as well. All right, so we have about 20 minutes for a Q&A, which is a lot of great time. I know I threw a ton of information at you. Um, so... Feel free to start, as I said, leading questions. I'm glad to see that the chat feature looks like it's working again um, and that some people are coming in late. I'm so glad. Um, all right. So, yes, I will be posting these slides later on. I'll post them to the Slack channel. And I also post all of the recordings now of these L chats on, um, it's at ellencompanydesign.com slash L chat. So you can find all the recordings there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this off of the slides and back to me for a moment. Okay. So, um, Chris says she is signed into the L chat.
forum on the Heroku app and hasn't received an email yet to log on. Hopefully it won't lag very much longer, Chris. If not, I'll, I'll add you in manually too. Um, so I'll wait a second for some questions if you all have any. Um, if not, we might end a little bit early, but surely there are some questions tonight. Um, great. Glad to see you all joining in late. Um, like I said, the recordings will be posted too, so you won't miss too much. All right. You're welcome, Chris. Any other questions? Anything that you want me to go into more detail? You can ask on the Slack forum or you can ask in chats. Let's see here. Switching back and forth. Great. Good, Monique. I'm so glad that you enjoyed being here. Thanks for that. And I'll go ahead and wait on your question. Sometimes, too, just to note, um, I know with the old chat feature for the webinar software that we're using, um, you can only leave a, a comment that's only so long. So for really long comments or questions, you might want to use the Slack form for that. Um, and the address for the for the L chat to get an invitation, I'll go ahead and drop it in the chat form as again. There we go. Okay. So um, I think it was Chris that she liked the categories that I have in the sidebar. Is this a manual process? So yes. If you go to Ellen Company and you go to the blog and you see, I get this question a lot, um, you see the graphics for the different blog categories. That's actually, um, I created all of those in Illustrator. And then I created them as buttons, so I linked to them. Um, so it's it's pretty simple, but yes, I did that manually. And I think it's just a fun, interactive way um, to, I know I always want to click on buttons and click on something colorful, so it's a fun way to get people to go over to those categories. All right, another question. Do you use a program when you brainstorm flow charts, or do you do them on paper every time? Um, I know there are programs out there, and I wish I knew some off the top of my head, but I usually just write it down on paper. And for my clients, part of the client homework is to use a Google Doc, and I just walk them through um, the content that they need on their site. I tell them all of this information, and then actually sometimes, not even on paper, but on Squarespace, I'll just go ahead and start dragging and dropping things in places and um, working through the flow of their website. But yes, if any of you know any good wireframing um, websites and flowcharts for brainstorming, things like that, feel free to leave it in the chat or in the L chat forum too as well. Um, and I'll look up some of those too and, and share what I can find with you. All right, another question. Do you think it's okay to leave a call to action um, at the bottom of each website web page that are not in the same order as your navigation bar? Or should the calls to action to the next page go in the order of your navigation bar? I don't think that they need to go in order. Um, I know sometimes the order might not follow exactly. You might be offering different things and that's totally fine. Um, so say you're on the about page and the next thing in your navigation might be services. Would it be okay on the about page to link to your contact page? Absolutely. Or to link to your blog? Yes. Um, I say yes and go for it. You might you might have calls to action to a few different things and that is totally fine. But yes, I think as long as you're being intentional about it and it seems like a natural and logical next step, then go for it. But great question. All right. Um, Spare the Room says, I used Visio when I was doing information systems in college. That's why I was curious. Okay, great. Um, Yes, if I come across more, and I know there are a lot of free ones too for setting up wireframes. I did that in um, in college as well. I wish I could remember them off the top of my head. But if I come across any that help with that, I'll be sure to share them too. Bree says that Lucid Chart is great and they work directly with Google Docs. Really great to know. I will definitely be keeping that in mind too. Thank you, Bree. All right. You are welcome. Okay, great. So let's see here. Um, Monique says, I'm launching my blog in January and I'm hoping to provide interior design services in the future, but she wants to establish her presence online first, which I think is really smart because you're creating your, your audience first. And then when you launch your services, you'll have an audience that's ready um, to book your services. So smart move. She says she's planning to have a homepage and then, um, her blog and homepage as well. 
So any suggestions for how to transition from a blog into offering services? Um, she says, right now, I almost feel like my site might be empty since it's half website, half blog. And that's exactly how I started with Ellen Company, too. Um, I was offering some services, but I offer more now than I did when I first started out. So I can totally relate to that. I would suggest still having that homepage to give people a clear idea of what you do and even what your blog is all about, if it's mainly your blog. Um, and then also for that emptiness that you might feel, you could also go and um, have your about page and have a contact page as well in case you do get inquiries or readers want to reach out to you. And then in your top navigation, you might have a few categories or a drop down of categories that people could visit and then have a landing page for each one of those categories and people can click on the posts in there. That way it doesn't feel as little as empty and you're pointing people around to the content that you do have on your site. Um, and then when you get your services up and running, you might take that category um, link down and go ahead and, or just move it somewhere else, like in your blog sidebar, and then list your services and put your services on your homepage. And that might be a more natural progression for you. I hope that's helpful. Um, Lily says, uh, oh, good. Lily met me at a workshop, the Bloom Workshop. I'm glad you're joining in here. She says, do you generally go over this kind of information of your, with your clients jointly, or do you use your expertise to build out their site and go over it after you get the feedback on how you structured things? Okay, so um, what I normally do is I, I, in my client homework, I have a lot of questions, the same that I pose to you. So what are, what's the main purpose of your website? Um, what objective do you want people to take when they land on your site? So what are your end goals? Um, I also ask them about to narrow down the items in their navigation. I help them work through the content. Um, and then when they give me all of that information, I walk through organizing it with them, but a lot of times I'll help organize it too. Or with drafts and mock-ups, I'll say, I know that you wanted to highlight this part of your business. And so I put a call to action here at the bottom of your site. What do you think about this? So it kind of goes hand in hand. Um, but some of that organization, I usually ask them to throw all the content at me and then we work through the organization together. I hope that's helpful. Oh, and I'm sorry, Bree, you may have been posting in the organizing content forum. I'll go over there too. Um, she says when she just was getting started with a website and a blog, how much content do you think is necessary to prepare before launching? I say go, go for it. Um, and when you do launch, I know a lot of people want to give like a first post of what your blog is and what you hope to do. And um, I would just dive into content. Your about page is normally where people would find out what your blog's about and what you plan to do with your blog and what the purpose is. So I would just dive into content and just get the post going. And I think, I know with me, I didn't prepare any posts ahead of time. And some people do just so um, visitors can land on the site and start looking around and see more content. Um, but usually it takes, and hopefully this isn't the case with you, but this is what Jake and I tell people. It usually takes about six months for your blog to really get rolling um, and for it to pick up. So go ahead and post, get content up there on your site. You can always change it as you go on your about pages or other pages of your site. And then um, just keep it rolling. Start to share those posts on social media. Start to, um, yeah, start putting your blog out there and just start to create more content. But I wouldn't, I've, I've seen this with a bunch of people who've reached out to me or other peers in the industry. They'll put so much time and thought into having this perfect launch for their, for their website. Um, and they have all of these great hopes and plans. And then when they launch, it's either too much to keep up with or um, they burn out really quickly. So I would suggest just jumping in there and then um, building it as you go. The great thing is you can always be changing things. I'm still always changing things. Um, so yeah. Okay, great. Um, let's go over to the organi organizing content channel. All right. Um, and someone else asks, do you use Squarespace for all of your sites? I've been working with WordPress for a few years and I'm considering a move. 
Um, I've made a couple exceptions, but yes, mainly with Squarespace, and I do love the platform. Um, there isn't as much customization as there is for WordPress, but um, the templates are very easy to work with. Um, they're mobile friendly and compatible on your phone and on iPads. Um, I can't recommend Squarespace enough. And you can still do coding on Squarespace, but you don't have to do coding, which I love even more. And I have tons of um, Squarespace tutorials and, and on the website. So um, if you are interested in learning more, be sure to, to check out the little Squarespace category in our blog sidebar. Um, but yes, I do love Squarespace. All right, let me go back to the chat. I keep switching back and forth. All right. Do you like the idea of read more when you're doing a blog post or do you prefer to just have the entire blog post showing on the page? I love that you brought this up because um, I'm about to do a post on blog excerpts very soon, specifically how to do it in Squarespace, but um, why you should do blog excerpts in the first place. When we first started, I showed the full blog post um, and a lot of people, when they land on a site, they might like to go through each long blog post back to back. But I like giving readers the option. So I like them to see different, um, all my different content. So I usually do four blog posts on the site with the read more button so they can see what they want to click on. It's also really in it so you can show more blog posts all at once when someone lands on your blog, which I think is really helpful. It's also helpful on the back end for me to see what content people enjoy reading the most. Um, so it gives me a good idea if they're clicking read more that they really do want to read that post. And then also for page views. Um, if you know that somebody clicks on it, they're more likely to start moving around, moving through your site and moving around your site. So that's really helpful too. Again, it goes by preference. Um, lifestyle bloggers, some of them like to have it to where you can see all the pictures all at once and keep scrolling. Um, it just depends on your content. But for me, I like people to see, again, with that grouping content idea, seeing all the content at once and then being able to click and learn more. Great question. Um, what is the URL for the LChat archive again? Okay, thank you, Jenny, for putting it on there. Um, what do you think of including a portfolio link in the page navigation widget? So do you mean with the page navigation widget, um, Lacey, do you mean in the main navigation? Or um, what are you talking about with the page navigation widget? I might need a little bit of clarification. But yes, definitely portfolio link on your homepage, um, also a portfolio link up in your main navigation as well. If you are a service-based business, um, if you're something like a photographer or something like that, you definitely need to have your portfolio front and center for people to see. Um, and someone asked, do you think that your two-week process is easier to do with Squarespace as opposed to WordPress? Oh, yes. There's no way I could do my two-week process with WordPress. Um, unless I really knew what I was doing and could code really quickly. But um, I'm not a WordPress pro by any means, and I feel a lot more comfortable with Squarespace. And yes, that's the only way that I'd be able to do my two-week process is because I use Squarespace. But great question. I think I got them all in the, um, in the chat. I'm going to go back to the Slack forum. All right. Another question, do you help your clients write and edit their copy, and can you recommend any good copywriters? I hope there are some good copywriters in this, um, in this L chat tonight, and if not, and you're tuning in on this later, you might want to go ahead and join the Slack forum and reach out to the people asking these questions. Um, I usually do not help my clients write their copy. I don't consider myself a fantastic copywriter, <laughs> and so... Um, so no, and usually within the two week time period, I don't have time to help them write their copy. So I ask them to provide it ahead of time and have all of their content ready to go for me. Um, so no, Kat, I don't at the moment. Um, and any good copywriters? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm lost on that one too. But if I do come across some really great resources, um, or any other great copywriters, I will definitely leave the links in the Slack form. And if any of you know any good copywriters, feel free to leave 
um, someone's information, I'm sure they would appreciate it in the Slack forum or in our chat. I'm gonna jump back over. All right, yes, the main navigation at the top. Um, back to that portfolio question and where it should be on your site. Absolutely, yes, in your main navigation. Um, for me, I know with Ellen Company, I don't have my portfolio in the main navigation, so I'm, um, I guess, a little bit of a hypocrite. I have it in my um, footer navigation, but I'm also not taking um, as many clients right now, and I'm booked through this upcoming year, so um, it doesn't need to be as front and center as some other things. Um, Chris says, do you like splash screens on a website to allow users to sign up to a newsletter? She says, I like the idea of trying them, but trying to work out the whereabouts um, or about where it's best to place them and how long until it pops up. So um, Jake and I have gone back and forth on this as well for Ellen Company and newsletter signups. I know for me personally, I don't love seeing pop-ups. Um, I think it's a little bit frustrating, especially if I'm trying to read a post or get to um, some some information. Um, but for that, and that's my personal choice. I'd love to know what you all think about this too. But I know that they can often be extremely effective and I've seen some really great stats for them too. Because I don't use one personally and I need to look at more statistics, um, I don't know how long you should wait and um, and where it's best to place them. I think usually people do it on the home page of their site or have it so where if someone lands on the site on any page, it pops up within a few seconds. Um, oh, Chris, and it's a he, not a she. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, so thank you for bearing with me. Um, but yes, I... I would love to hear what you all think. Use the chat window. Do pop-ups frustrate you or do you usually put your email address in there? Um, I would be interested in hearing that too. Spare the Room says, what about scroll boxes? Those are a lot better, especially when it doesn't pop up until you're a ways down the page. That might be another option too. Again, I need to go in and do a little bit more research on these. Um, City Love says the pop-ups that have a free download attached work for me sometimes as a reader. That's good to know too. A little, um, a little incentive to sign up for the newsletter. <laughs> All right. Um, yes, that's good to know. And again, feel free to leave your thoughts and comments in there too. All right. Let's see if I'm missing any other. Oh. Kat, Jen might have some um, copywriting help for you on the Slack forum, so be sure to check that out as well. All right, I know we have, I think I have time for one more, one or two more questions. Um, so if you have any more, feel free to leave them in the chat box. And if you come up with some later, feel free to use our Slack forum and leave some questions in there. Um, Spare the Room says Sumo Me has a scroll box that they use and popping up 40% of the way down a post. That's really helpful too. That way you know somebody is interested before the pop-up appears. All right. Well, that might be it for tonight. I hope that you all enjoyed um, the content. Good. We have some links popping in there. Um, for stats on pop-ups, awesome. I'm going to open that up and check on it when we get off of here. I really appreciate it, Chris. Um, but yes, we have some really exciting LCHATs coming up and some special guests appearing on LCHATs in the near future. Um, I'm going to post those tomorrow, so stay tuned for registration links. And I'll also post those registration links in our Slack forum. They'll be made available on the website as well. Um, I'll be posting, again, like I said before, these slides from tonight and also um, the recording in the Slack forum and at ellencompanydesign.com slash LChat. I appreciate you all tuning in tonight. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you're a little bit more confident in setting up your website and organizing the content on your website. And I really hope to see you in next week's LChat. I hope that you all have a great week and I hope to see you soon.